I say, how are you doing today? How are you doing today? I am your host, Lacey G. Soldier Turner, and I have a very special guest with me today. I'm about to bring her on. We have the most wonderful, amazing, talented Linda Pritchard. Welcome to the platform. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me. Uh, no problem at all. So before we get into what I want to talk about, my first question is, can you let the people know where were you born and raised and how was your upbringing as a child? Where was I born and raised? Okay, first I was born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri. Mm -hmm. I'm a St. Louis transplant, although I've been here <laughs> well over 20 years. So, you know, <laughs> and my upbringing was wonderful. I am the second of four and the daughter of a police officer and a stay-at-home mom. Okay. And according to my children, I had a 70s sitcom <laughs> upbringing. <laughs> Why they when, say when I talk about my, you know, how it was when we grew up and everything, they're like, oh, my God, you guys had a 70s sitcom upbringing. So, you know, I, I own that and I appreciate it. I love it. <laughs> so for anybody who's never been to St. Louis, because, you know, they hear about the murder rates and all this type of stuff and they'd be scared to come here. Can you tell the people who has never been here about St. Louis? St. Louis. OK, we got our scary spots. You know, that's true. Yeah. But overall, St. Louis is a it's a great city to me. I love St. Louis. Mm -hmm. I love how we have so many different um, cultures and neighborhoods. And, you know, you can be out west and kind of be a little more refined and polished. And you can go downtown. You can go to the West End. I love St. Louis. Mm -hmm. um, I think murder is going to happen just about anywhere. Back. So you figure out where not to go. <laughs> And the likelihood of that happening is probably pretty slim. Um, I have to admit, though, because I live in um, the middle of St. Louis. I live in U-City. And I'm not a commuter, so I need to be within 15 minutes of everything that makes me happy. So U-City <laughs> is ideal for that. <laughs> We've right. had our challenges, but overall, I don't see a lot of that negativity. But I'm not denying that it exists. I don't want to negate anybody else's experience. But I love St. Louis. Um, it's very... Not very different. It's different than Kansas City, but when I first got here, it took a minute to get my bearings because you need to find your space and your people. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, because when I got here, you know, I had a younger child and then a second child. So, you know, I needed to find my mom crew and all the stuff that little kids need. Once I got that going, it was great. And, you know, my kids have grown up here and have no problem coming back. You know, they don't have that. Oh, I never come back to St. Louis kind of <laughs> attitude. They love St. Louis, too. And I think it might be a U City thing a little bit because you know the U City, the U City love is a whole different kind of love. So you know they grew up in U yeah. City, so maybe that's what it is. <laughs> and look, yeah, me and Linda, we still alive. So come on, yeah, we're good. Come on it's in, good. yeah. Water's yeah. warm. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this, Linda. Can you give, uh, I guess, uh, talk about your school and background a little bit? Well, like I said, I grew up in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. So when I first moved here and people kept asking me what high school I went to, I'm like, <laughs> Southeast? I mean, why do you care? But <laughs> so, you know, but then I figured out that whole dynamic. We won't even go there with that. <laughs> but um, I grew up in Kansas City. I went to local neighborhood schools, um, went to Southeast, um, Southeast Knights and Ladies. What's up? <laughs> but um, love me some Southeast. Um, love the, you know, still connected with a lot of the people that went there. When I graduated, I initially went to fashion merchandising school in Kansas City because mm. I've always been a fashionista since like age of three. Okay, okay. And when I so went to fashion school and then fast forward a few years later and I ended up relocating here, mm -hmm. um, the job that I was in, I was doing training and development. Okay. And I found out about a program through a coworker um, to get certified to train and educate adults in the workforce. So I ended up going back to school with a joint project between SIU, Carbondale and Scott Air Force Base. Right. And so got some additional education there. So yeah, my schooling has kind of been, right. I didn't take that straight linear path. <laughs> um, you know, looking back, I kind of wish to some degree I had made a couple of different decisions, but you know, you can't go back. You can only look yeah. forward. Right. Um, I, in particular, um, I had a daughter, one of my daughters went to an HBCU. Mm -hmm. 
And I worked for an HBCU and the culture was amazing. Lincoln University in Jefferson City. And um, took a couple of classes there, but did not attend as an undergrad. And seeing my daughter's experience at Jackson State and just the love and the embracing and all the culture, I kind of wish that, you know, maybe I had made a different decision, but hey, look, it ain't overall, too much. You can go back. You can go back. You can't go back. You can't <laughs> go back. And I did get to, you know, share some of the experience vicariously through her. Um, an HBCU homecoming is like no other homecoming ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That first year when we went and tailgating alone was like, whoa. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a whole, it's a whole lifestyle and a vibe. And, you know, and you had trailers, you know, some alums that had a trailer with a butler oh, and man. red oh, carpet. And, and, y'all hungry? Come on. I wish I was there. I wish I was there. Yeah, and then, you know, you go to the game and the game is fine, but then you got halftime and you got the band. Oh, uh, yeah. So that was really wonderful. But yeah, overall schooling was great. Growing up was pretty great. I've been very fortunate. I didn't have a lot of issues per se and just that regular everyday childhood growing up with my parents and my siblings, you know. Okay. And I also saw, you know, you have over 20 years experience in soft skills, education and consulting. Can you let the people know what that is? Okay, soft skills are all the things that we need in order to, we need to align our soft skills with our hard skills. So, you know, you go to school, you get an education or you go and get certified and you learn how to do a thing. The soft skills are etiquette, how you dress, how you interact with your coworkers. Um, Please and thank you. The stuff basically that we learned in kindergarten just you know make that a little bit bigger those are soft skills so that's what i educate on i make sure people know better people who want who aspire to know better and want to do better i make sure i'm the girl to like, help that happen okay uh can you uh tell me about the organization fundamentals by linda so fundamentals by linda pritchard is your go-to source for all things etiquette style and workplace readiness so i'm basically there for people and it, especially for people who are of a certain age most of the most of us learned this stuff in kindergarten or at church or in girl scouts or in boy scouts when we were kids so i work with adults to help refresh that and then help bring them into the current time because you know over time things change mm-hmm. we now have this lovely technology between us yeah. um <laughs> we just went through the whole COVID thing where everybody was zooming uh-huh. so you have different rules of engagement that mm-hmm. we as a society need to know and understand and incorporate so that we can do better and be better Okay. Yeah, so can you, uh, I guess, elaborate, break that down even more, like how important etiquette is, like when you're going on job interviews or anything, because people look at it and be like, I don't need that type of stuff. So can you break it's that down? It's extremely down? important. And many times when you, because I work, I've done training and development for years. So I've always been a part of human resources, but I was not human resources. So I would, you know, sometimes see people come in and you knew they wanted the job you knew they might have been a good fit for the job but they arrived 30 minutes late or inappropriately dressed or with their children or just things that are going to make that hr executive go "Mm, i don't know if i can send you to the next level i can't send you to the marketing department because i've already seen timeliness is not important to you Um, I'm looking at your resume and you've got three typos and it's dirty. Mm. (laughs) So so those little, and I won't even say those little things, those things can sometimes hinder you from getting to your next level. I'm sure you've heard the whole thing that people size you up that instant, you know, first 10, 15 seconds. So how you present yourself, how you speak. Um, the type of um, conversation that you have. If you're invited to go to lunch as part of your interview, you have to know what are the protocols. So, you know, do you order three drinks because somebody else is paying? (laughs) (laughs) Do you you look at the menu and go, ooh, I'm going to have the lobster and the steak today because it's on their diet. (laughs) This whole thing is being looked at by the person that's interviewing you. And they may politely smile and go ahead and say, sure, get what you want. But 
I can guarantee you, you're not going to get called back for a second. <laughs> Fact. Yeah. That is it's not true. happening. So that's how it really unfolded because, okay, I'll be honest. You know, you in at work like, girl, come down here. You got to see what just walked in, you know. Yeah. And it was humorous, but then it got to be disturbing yeah. because many of the people that I saw coming into these situations looked like you and me. And I'm pro my people all day, every day. Mm -hmm. I'm pro all people, but yes. in particular, my people. My people yeah. And I want my people to not only survive, I want them to thrive. Mm -hmm. So while I couldn't say, hey, you know what? Let's postpone your interview, go home, put on something else or whatever. I could do something to make sure people knew, mm -hmm. putting together tips and techniques. Mm -hmm. um, when I work with students, um, kids in high school and in college, I let them know that the interview process sometimes starts before you even pull on the parking lot. Right. I met with an HR director at a local company here, and he said that um, many people don't even know who he is. They don't see him. He's the, not, not HR, I'm sorry, the CEO of the company. Sure. They don't see him. But he said on interview days, what he would often do is he would go out and walk in the parking lot. Mm to see who pulled in and maybe parked in the disabled spot <laughs> mm. or who was rude to the person taking tickets coming in. Well, he would walk around smoking around weed in the car or something. Yeah, get a little bit before you go in. You know? But uh, then he said he would walk around the lobby and just check out who was sitting out there. How are they engaging with his staff? Are they rude to the receptionist? Mm. Um, are they on their phone loudly? Are they having inappropriate conversation? And he said many times he would go to HR and say, you know what, those two out there, mm -mm, they're not going to fit here. Wow. So you're being pre-interviewed before you even get interviewed. Mm -hmm. So there are so many things that go into making sure, not only in the workplace, but just how we interact with, interact with one another. Mm -hmm. Etiquette shouldn't make you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm not... Try, when people get in my presence, sometimes they're like, oh, you know, let me sit up. You know, use the right for it. <laughs> it's not about that. It's about making me comfortable and you comfortable so that we can interact, you know, and have a quality experience. Yes. It's really just giving you those tools to do and be better as you go through life. That's right. Okay. And I see, you know, you're joining the Argus team with your new column. Can you tell the people about your column? Okay. The column is going to be called Please, Thank You, and Should I? So, because I've found over the years, I would get these questions from family and friends. Okay, I got invited to a black tie event. Should I wear this or should I wear that? Mm -hmm. Or I got invited, you know, I got the invitation to go to XYZ event or a party or a graduation. I'm not going to be able to go. Do I have to RSVP? Mm -hmm. Do I have to send a gift anyway? So these are all these questions that we grapple with that, you know, they're not made or make or break. Mm -hmm. It's not brain surgery, but you want to put, you know, you want to always put your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. You want to have positive interactions with your colleagues and with your friends and family. Mm -hmm. So it's just asking people to send me those questions. I'll give you the answers that hopefully answer your questions and give you peace of mind. And let's just keep it rolling. Okay. Hey, look, Lynn, I'm going to be sending you some questions. I'm going to be like, I'll do, I'll do <laughs> I did a um, soft skills session at the um, Black Chamber, Heartland Black Chamber, yeah. last spring. And the outcome of the entire event was, girl, you need to do an online class. You need to do a class because I'm a barbarian. I haven't thought about this stuff in years. <laughs> and, it, and the more I thought about it, it made perfect sense. Because if you learn this at eight years old mm -hmm. and you're now 42, it's time for a refresher. Facts, definitely. I agree with you. So look, let me ask you this. So um, I guess to go back, because I know now when people get hired a lot, I'm pretty sure now, you know, social media is a, is a big thing. So what advice would you give to people who probably, you know, looking for a job, but they feel like stuff that they do on social media that the HR department probably going to be trying to go looking for? <laughs> and, you know, I have some issue with that because I feel like it, your private life is your private life. But we also know, too, social media and technology has kind of eradicated that to a degree. Definitely. What I tell students 
as soon as you know they get on social media, what I tell young adults and what I tell seasoned adult, adults is before you put yourself in a situation where you know they're going to be looking at you, clean up your social media. There you go. Perfect. Clean up your social media. Um, I'm not here to judge you. I can't tell you what to do as an adult, but I do know that there have been multiple situations that I've witnessed or experienced with other people that social media has become a negative. Um, I'll give you a prime example. We had a student at um, a school I worked with a few years ago that got a scholarship mm -hmm. and got the, you know, it was early decision. What they didn't realize is the college will check your grades, mm -hmm. your attendance, and often your social media second semester. Mm -hmm. They did. There was something inappropriate. They lost the scholarship. Wow. <clears throat> now, can you imagine you told mom and dad in October, hey, I got a full ride yeah. and I got to go back home in March and go, uh, not so much. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And where I have issue with that is I know that a teenager's brain is still forming. Fact, yes. So, yes, they should be held accountable, but I think they should be given some grace because yeah. their brains are still forming. Yeah. But the not kids, everybody the kids. feels the kids. <laughs> not everybody feels that way. Yeah. So you have situations where they often are not given grace. Mm. But you have adults that put all of their life on social media, all right. of their business. Yeah. I mean, how many times have you seen people see put it all out there and then get angry because people are then asking like, questions. like you know what put your own business you put it out there there are going to be people that are going to be curious they're going to ask questions uh -huh. so the things you can do you can have a business account and a personal account you, you can make your personal account private uh -huh. but you the thing i always tell people is think before you post i like that that's great advice right there so let me ask you this you know i've been no i know you've been doing in this a lot doing your thing a long time what would you say on your journey has been your greatest challenge um in terms of my business or just the training in general everything right all of which, whichever one you feel has been your greatest challenge okay so in the business has been really for me i i want i want to own my part in this is staying consistent mm -hmm. because it okay. seems like it's simple. You know, you set up a web page or you set up your social media and you put stuff out there and you just keep it going. But life happens while you're doing this. Right. So if you want to be a successful brand, if you want to have your name out there and you want to have opportunities, you have to stay in the grind. Mm -hmm. And that can be difficult because you have other things that are distracting. Mm -hmm. So that's been a challenge for me. And that's something that I have committed for this year because i don't do resolutions mm -hmm. i do goals and if i hit my goals i celebrate if i fall short i dust myself off and i get back up and i reset and get going again but i think staying consistent and staying on task that's been a big challenge for me mm -hmm. um overall the thing that was surprising i won't say well it was surprising because you don't know how you're going to be perceived or how people are going to receive when you say, hey, I'm here to help you. And they're like, I didn't, I didn't call you. <laughs> <laughs> like, why, you know, why are you telling me I need help? Right, right. But when I started putting myself out there, the consistent message that I got is, oh, my God, this is so needed. Mm. You know, do you work with children? Because have you seen these kids? You know, that kind of thing. But just teaching that basic please and thank you. Um, this is what you wear for this. This is what you wear for that. When you're going to work, mm -hmm. try to do these things. That's been very well received. So that's been pretty positive. Okay. So to flip that, what would you say has been your greatest accomplishment? My greatest accomplishment has been actually pulling the trigger and making this thing happen. Mm, because I am the kind of person that I don't know if it's on my forehead or what, but I'm kind of like, hey, can you help me with this? You know, <laughs> I have this. So that's just kind of been since I was a kid. So I own that. And I'm I'm pleased that people feel comfortable with that. So I've helped multiple people. You know, I'm like, have you thought about doing this? You should do a podcast. You should do this. <laughs> so I've gotten people up and running, but I'm sitting here with my stuff with 3,000 <laughs> ideas. And, I, and I haven't really put myself out there. So my biggest accomplishment has just said, hey, this is me. This is what I'm doing. 
take me as I am. And then coupled with that, this opportunity with the Argus. I'm so excited to be able to share my work and share what I'm passionate about with the masses. And I think we're going to do great work together. Okay, I like that. So let me ask you this. Do you have anything else coming up that you want to promote? Yes, but I'm so glad you asked. Um, February 6th, I'm doing an online etiquette class for adults called Everyday Etiquette 2.0. Okay. And it's that refresher course that I talked to you about mm -hmm. where people can, we're just going to cover, I'm going to do about five or six topics because there are so many things you can cover, but it's just going to be an hour, hour and a half where I'll get into content and then I'll have Q&A. And if people hopefully, you know, sign up and want to do more, I'll do another one right after. But that's coming up February 6th. It's going to be online. So anybody in the world, if they want to jump on, they, they, can find, they can find me at Fundamentals by Linda Pritchard. That's what all my social media is called. Um, sign up. Join me and I'll see you on February 6th. And then definitely the column is going to be launched really soon with the Argus. Um, I've got several uh, opinion, well, culture pieces that are going to be coming out as well. So it's a lot happening and I'm working on a few things that are going to be going on in February and March. So you'll be seeing those popping up in the Argus as well. Okay. So once again, let the people know how they can get in contact with you. Okay, again, the name of my organization is Fundamentals by Linda Pritchard. I all of my social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, IG, and my my no, my website is called Etiquette and Image, but my no, I'm getting confused. That's my email. <laughs> so everything is called Fundamentals by Linda Pritchard. If you type that in, that'll take you wherever you need to go. Okay. So Miss Linda, my last question that I love to ask all my guests. Okay. When it is all said and done and you are long gone from this earth, what is it that you want the people to know about Linda Pritchard? Um, I would love my legacy to be that I was always a supporter, a good friend, a good sister, and a lover of people. And I helped people learn to do better and be better. Okay. Well, there you have it. Now. Hey, listen, y'all, tap in with it. She's doing great things. I am glad to have you on the team of the Argus, and I'm going to let you know when I drop this article also. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. You have a good one, okay? You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right, <laughs>